And welcome back to High School Football Friday on ESPN Charlotte. Big Mo here, and I'm going to tell you something. We got a twin bill interview right here. Guys play in our own backyard. They're Mountain Island Charter. Robert Washington is the head coach. We're going to talk to him in a moment. They represent the Southern Piedmont Conference, a 1A uh, football conference. And we're going to talk to their quarterback, Kyle Holcomb. Kyle Holcomb had a monster game last week. 11 of 13, 474 yards, seven touchdowns, and he averaged 43 yards per pass play. I mean, those are mind-boggling numbers. And wow, you look at the percentage, it's just outstanding. First of all, Kyle, thank you for being a part of the program, and congratulations on a big evening last week. Hey. What was that like? I mean, 11 of 13, averaging 43 yards per reception and seven touchdowns. What was it like when you lined up behind center, dropped back? Was there that large amount of time to where you got to see a lot of things and you were able to distinguish uh, uh, the routes, uh, the keys, if you will, when you're going down your progressions, your reads? Um, I think it was really just working on timing and practice and trusting our receiver to get to the spot and then relying on the O-line to just give me, take pressure off of me, make easy throws. And being the quarterback, a lot of times people feed off the quarterback, especially offensive line. And from what I'm told, you're, you're a leader of that team. People respect you. When you have that respect, when you have that trait, is it easy for the lineman to go up there and say, okay, we'll get that extra block for you. We'll to make sure that nobody's coming from the outside. Yes, sir. I think they really respect me and uh, to block, I guess. <laughs> Talk about being the quarterback. It is the focal point. When things go right, you get the glory. When things go wrong, you get the blame. It it, it has to be a special breed of person to play quarterback. How do you let all the other stuff run off your back? Let's say you're not having a great game. Uh, How do you let that run off your back, man? Uh, You just have to shake it off. You just have to have a mindset that you can do good the next play, and you just trust the coaches that they're going to call the right plays and you do what you're supposed to. Who are some of the quarterbacks that uh, you like watching that, I guess you might have uh, taken a little bit of this style to make your own. Who are some of those quarterbacks you like to uh, like to watch play? Uh, I like to watch Aaron Rodgers play because he's he can get out of the pocket and make throws, and he just he, he's, more, he's more of the accurate quarterback in the league. Yeah, he's very accurate. I know we see him twice a year as a Bears fan, and he never makes us, uh, never lets us forget that he is accurate and he can get out of the pocket. What are some of the things as a quarterback that you think you've succeeded on? But what are some of the things that you think you're going to have to work on to get a little more out of your effort? Uh, I'm definitely going to have to work on my speed and agility, just quickness to get out of the pocket. And then I'm also going to have to work on my arm strength, get stronger in the weight room, so I can hit those deer balls. And how important is that when coaches tell you to get in the weight room? How important is that? It's very important. I mean, you have to. I mean, you you want to be the strongest person on the field. You want to be better than the other person across the line. Well, Kyle, I tell you what, you have done a great job, and it's just phenomenal um, that uh, you're representing the school in this interview. And I really appreciate this. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to come out there and do some other things and talk to some other players but we we saw this and i just said man i got to get this guy on along with your coach and again we you know we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule now i know we you got a game this week who are you guys playing this week coming up uh we're playing victor christian sir oh it should be a good game and uh tell you what folks if you want to go out there and see some good high school football go see these young men at mountain island charter uh, i tell you what you know it's great football go support your high school Kyle, thank you. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. And now let's go to the head coach, Coach Robert Washington. He's the head football coach there. Coach, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Big Mo. Coach, um, let me tell you, I read about the situation. You stepped into it, and you're building the program the way you want to build a program. It takes time to build a program, but yet uh, it seems like you're seeing the fruits of your labor, Coach. Yes, and I mean, it's just taking a total community effort. I mean, I can't just take the credit for it. I got great coaches, you know, first and foremost, we got players, you know, good players that's willing to listen, work hard, 
on the field and off the field. You know, I definitely got to shout out my coaches because I'm nothing without them. You know, my OC, Montez Lash, D coordinator, uh, Ronnie Hunter, you know, my O-line coaches, Jack Gardner's, you know, you know, take the total team effort. My sister head coach was my right hand man. Um, uh, Mr. LeVar Wynn. So it's just, it's taking a, a total effort. Um, and as you know, it, you know, as a head coach and the quarterback, you know, we get all the credit when we win and get all the blame when we lose. But really it's taking a total community effort because we're only in our second year of varsity football. And, um, you know, we got the right support from administration to, you know, uh, the community to the parents, uh, just, you know, Raptors fans all around. They're, they're thirsty for a good, um, you know, competitive football team. And I'm proud that we're able to be able to give that to them. And, Coach, you're a young man, and I think this is the perfect situation for you because this team, like you said, second season in existence on a varsity level. And this is something, Coach, where as a young man, like you could take it, build the program the way you want to build it, and, and and be successful. And I, you see that with a lot of programs, a lot of starting programs and a lot of other programs, they're going with the younger coaches. And that's not to slight the older coaches, but they're going with the younger coaches, the newer programs, because you rela- I think you relate to the younger players a little bit better. Yeah, without question. And, you know, just bringing a different philosophy. You know, I'm not – I don't have the traditional philosophy, but, you know, one thing that I'll focus more on is, the off the field, you know, you know, success as far as mm-hmm. them doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom. Like our players, if you make two F's on any of your tests in that week, you can't play in the game. Now, you know, I won't sit you out, but you won't play, you won't get in the game. So, uh, that's our biggest thing is just holding them to a higher standard and, you know, giving them more than just football. You know, I, I care more about what happens to these young men, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from after coaching them versus what they can do for us on the field because, you know, you can win in a game but really lose all around. So we're more focused on the total athlete as far as what they do in the classroom. And believe it or not, it, it, it starts reflecting on the field because when you start getting smart kids, disciplined kids that, you know, show up for practice on time, then the kids are going to show up in class on time. It's going to make the A's and the B's to do what they're supposed to do. So you know it's going to reflect on the football field. So, you know, my biggest thing was just committing to them as student athletes first. Who are some of the people that, I guess, uh, you looked up to uh, to guide your coaching philosophy? Uh, who are some of those coaches? Well, one of, one of the coaches is a, a guy named Duke Graham. Duke Graham coached in Gaston County for a long time. Um, you know, just knowing him, just knowing – uh, you know, some of the people that, I, you know, that I came up with that he's mentored, that he's been around, you know, that seeing how they turned out as men, you know, how he tried to give them a better way and, and told, told them to keep their grades up. Um, another person is Bobby McLaughlin. Uh, Bobby's the OC of, um, of Canning. I came up under him at Tom Flake, um, Christian. Um, so, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of, a, a lot of coaches, you know, uh, Bob O'Donnell, I came up under him. Um, I was able to, you know, fortunate enough to watch, you know, Chad Gray, Davidson, they build that program from the ground up. So I was able to see a lot of guys in the area that, you know, great football minds and, and also, you know, focused on the right thing as far as athletics and academics, a combination of both, but not putting athletics before the academics. Very good point. Coach, you look at a lot of these teams, especially the younger teams, and they're building these feeder teams like the Pop Order team, the Youth League teams. So these teams will be running similar offenses to what your coaching staff is running. So once they get to uh, Mountain Island Charter, they would probably be more prepared to run the offense that you're running. Are you uh, are you having any success finding teams that are going to be able to run what you run? So when they get to the next level, they'll be able to step in and move in and uh, not be too uh, – uh, too slowed down by things? Well, you know, the thing, the, the unique thing, you go back to, you know, being a younger coach, you know, different philosophy. Um, our system is based around the talent we have. Like, whatever talent that we have that year, like this year we're more spread. Next year might dictate us to have more of a power game. 
I like to dictate and set up the offense around and the defense around our kids' skill set. Mm. What we do is we put each kid in the best situation to be successful, and that builds their confidence. And we're working their weaknesses um, in practice. We'll, we'll skill and drill them. I'm, I'm a big person on teaching technique and meeting that kid where they're at in their learning process. Not uh, my offense or my defense had them and say, hey, you got to learn this, you got to perfect this. Now I want to know what you do best, and I want to put you in a position where you can make plays. I like that philosophy. I mean, man, that 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 just really makes me want to go put some shoulder pads on and get out there. <laughs> I mean, that that's a great philosophy because a lot of times, you know, people uh, a lot of people work in systems and stuff, and I think this is kind of outside of the helmet, if you will, because you you got to you got to adjust to what you have, and if you don't have those speedy guys, then you got to get those grinders and grind it out. No doubt. When you look at this team, what do you want to see? Uh, you see progress now. What do you want to see, let's say, in your first senior class? What do you want to see to say, wow, this is what we've done, we've done well, but now it's on to bigger and better things? Yeah, well, we, we finished our first senior class last year. Uh-huh. We was fortunate enough to have, out of seven of our seniors, we had uh, five of them signed to college wow. um, in the first year. Um, and the other two guys, you know, one is exploring a track option, and another guy is joining the Marines, where he's in that process of doing it. So, you know, just being able to place those kids, those kids where they need to be at. You know, everybody, you know, is not, you know, made for college. But let's get you a skill to trade where you can be a productive citizen with the society. Because for us, football is nothing more than a carrot. You know, football is not everything. And I know... You know, high school football is a lot. You know, you get a lot of emotions. You get a lot of, you know, from the parents, the fans, the opposing coaches. But honestly, we we look at it from a community as a whole at Mount Island Charter. That's why I love it. Because we look at football like football's not everything. It's, it's just a piece of, uh, of, of, just a small piece of those players' lives. But it's also a carrot to get them to do the things that we need them to do on and off the field. You know, I get parents that call me. When kids aren't doing right at home, they haven't taken out the trash. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can't take out the trash, you can't listen to your peers, how are you going to come on the field and execute a game plan? That's let's, true. Let's, you know, let's be well-rounded. Well, I'll tell you what. You tell that young man that's joining the Marine Corps as a former Marine, you tell him I said Semper Fi. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. And, you know, and I told him, when, you know, when he, when he told us he was going to the Marine and he didn't want to pursue a football career, I was I was actually more proud that he would go and serve our country, you know, because he's he's, he's going in a direction. And you know how that is, Big Bo. Mm-hmm. As long as you're going and progress uh, um, a direction, and you're making something yourself. This is what we want to give these young men: is that okay? You playing high school football, you win and you lose. Don't get me wrong; I want to win no more than any other coach out here. But at what cost? Exactly. I would rather my players win. In the classroom, I give you an example. We had um, the only game that we lost this year. The very next Monday, our kid committed to Cornell. Wow! So that was more of a yeah. We lost Friday, but we're really winning, and 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 overall in a bigger picture. Well, you tell that young man that uh, I went into the core and I played plenty of football. They have a lot of football teams there. Uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, football teams around the bases. It, it is just as competitive as college football. He'll have a lot of fun there. But uh, again, I like what you, uh, the life lesson is really what's important. And I think that's what we're fighting about about Mountain uh, Island Charter, the uh, Raptors. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, Coach. I really look forward to meeting you soon in person. I'm going to have to give me some uh, Raptor swag so I can wear it on the air one day. Oh, no doubt. We, you know, let me know. We'll get you hooked up. Hey, that sounds like a plan. I, I tell, you, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to visit. I am going to visit your academy. Uh, I'm going to check it out, uh, get to talk to you, get to uh, know the kids there, talk to them. And um, when we get to the playoffs, I'm going to be sporting one of them shirts as we go. Uh, and we're, starting, we're going to start doing some uh, podcasts uh, on uh, Facebook. So, you know, I have a face for radio. But they will be able to see me with the uh, Raptor shirt on, so we're looking forward to that. 
Okay, let's, let's get you set up for some Royal and Kelly. I like that. I like that a lot. I love the killers and I love the helmets. Helmets are to die for. Coach, great stuff. I look forward to talking to you again when the playoffs hit and we can keep uh, in contact, letting uh, letting us in the high school football world know about what's going on with your team. And uh, continue success and thank you. All right. Thanks again, Big Mo. He is Coach Robert Washington, the head football coach of Mountain Island Charter, the Raptors doing their thing in the Southern Piedmont 1A Conference. We'll be back right here on ESPN Charlotte and ESPNCharlotte.net.